Scotland now in terms of potential funds from a frankly government of failure. So it's going to be a focus on sovereign bond markets. Again, central governments from Bank of England, Governor Bailey, opening the conference. It should speak for around a 10 minutes' time. Okay, traders, uh, welcome to today's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, before I get going here, can I just do a sound check and uh, an audio check if you can hear me? And you can see the tip mail welcome screen and why in the chat box would be great. Thanks very much. Okay, so before we get going, as always, we want to pay attention to the risk disclaimer. As I'm sure most of us are aware by now, uh, trading uh, any financial instrument carries an inherent risk and you can lose uh, more money than you necessarily have on deposit. And secondly, and most importantly for today's discussion, any views expressed by uh, me here today are solely mine. Uh, they are not indicative or representative of uh, views held by Tipmill UK or Tipmill Europe Limited. Um, so just before we get going here, a brief introduction uh, to me. Um, like I said, my name is Patrick Munley. Um, after I graduated from uh, King's College, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. Uh, after a period there, I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. Uh, with some time on my hands and some chips to pay, play with, I moved on to explore my passion for markets. So uh, this was around uh, the beginning of 2005. And uh, I started day trading the S&P 500. And after I had some uh, early beginner's luck, which, as is often the case, ran out, I then went on to actually experience a, a six-figure hit on my personal capital. Uh, it was at this stage, after what I can only describe as a, a gut-wrenching experience, that I decided to get serious about trading and uh, I sought out a mentor who demonstrated excellence in trading. After working with him for 18 months, uh, this was a, a period during which I, up, I upped not just my technical game and developed a strategy that I researched, extensively back and forward tested, all of which was underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. But most importantly, during the periods of mentorship, I significantly developed uh, my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated uh, individual focused on financial games to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, you understand the true nature of trading, uh, which is really a numbers game in which you're, you're simply playing uh, the probabilities. You then start to lose the emotional investments and that hellish emo emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. Uh, I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or a small tree, a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in terms of my execution, that my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. Uh, my multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service delivering annual positive returns, and I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns uh, from the markets. 
I've consulted numerous brokers and trading education brands, uh, contributing written content, um, mainly on market analysis to strategy development and execution. In addition to my, uh, my fund management uh, and private mentoring, I'm also the uh, resident market expert for Tickmill, whereby I provide a daily market outlook and a setup for the day, a chart of the day, uh, and you can access that through their blog and you can sign up to, uh, to receive daily alerts on what it is I'm looking at in the markets. Um, my other passion project really is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called FX Career Swap, offering development and funding to retail trading talent. FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders, market and trading strategy knowledge, but we work on mindset development and through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a 50-50 profit share basis. For those that are interested, I'll pop a link in the chat at the end uh, with details regarding FX Career Swap. So that's, uh, that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. And let's, uh, let's this week, we, I'm gonna jump straight into the charts. We're going to uh, do something slightly different. We're gonna go through each of the charts I'm going to look at uh, and see if we can identify some uh, potential opportunities uh, in the, uh, for the coming sessions. Before we, um, before we do get into to looking at the charts, I did want to draw uh, your attention to one, uh, one noteworthy um, issue that um, it's been highlighted that uh, for the 26 of the last 33 days, the, uh, the euros opened or closed uh, around 118.55, um, and this is in the middle of extremes traded since the end of July. Uh, the gravitational pull of this 118.55 is increasing. Uh, seven of 11 September trading days, the pair opened or closed within 10 pips of this level. So it looks like we're, uh, we're developing a range here. And what I want to draw your attention to is the influence of option expiries, uh, which are continuing to grow uh, during this consolidation phase. There's roughly now $120 billion worth of expiries between 117 and 120, all expiring between uh, now and November. So it's, uh, it's no wonder that we're seeing quite a, a tight range develop in the Euro at the moment. And, uh, and this, this, this uh, options action uh, certainly is going to, uh, is going to lead to um, to that in all likelihood in the near term at least continuing. So let's, uh, let's jump into the charts. Let's start with the dollar. This, uh, this dollar index is the equal weighted dollar index. So this is the dollar versus the uh, Euro, the Aussie, Sterling and the Yen on an equal weighted basis. And we'll look at the broader uh, dollar index at the moment. And, um, and where I think we're up to uh, with this at this stage, bearing in mind what we've just been talking about in terms of uh, the options action, I think we're starting to get into uh, a pattern here of uh, carving out what I think is going to be a inverse head and shoulders scenario. So um, what we'll be looking at is uh, this being our left shoulder here. And then clone that. We have our head down here. And then I think we're in the process now of, um, of carving out the right shoulder over here. Um, and you can see in terms of the, the left shoulder, if we think about the market in terms of mirroring action here, we could have two touches here of this support area at the 119.34. We, we tried to get down there yesterday uh, failed, but I think uh, we're, we're rolling over a bit here today. So we could be down testing this 119.50 area. Um, note that on this last low that we had, we had significant uh, momentum divergence as per the momentum studies down here. So this adds credence to the idea that we could be, uh, could be developing a, an inverse head and shoulders pattern here, um, which could lead to uh, an extended corrective move. So a um, couple of ways of measuring this. Uh, the one that I use, mo uh, sorry, mostly, mostly, um, is uh, an equidistant swing idea. So 
We do get a pullback into this uh, right hand shoulder here, 11940. Uh, then, to my mind, uh, this would set up the uh, what Elliott Wave guys would call a, an ABC correction or an ABCD, however you like to term it yourself. Um, but certainly, what we have here is that descending trend line coming in. Uh, from the highs that we posted back in March and uh, we've broken out now and this would fit with the idea of a pullback to retest that trend line from above and then set up this move which would take us back into um, these lows that we uh, this, that we had uh, just prior to that uh, that spike up in March so you can see how structure would develop there and, and from here, um, this would be taking us in, if, if, in terms of time at this stage, uh, certainly into the end of September. It's from this area that I think we then could see the next uh, meaningful move. And I'm, uh, as most of you who know me uh, will know that I'm pretty bearish the dollar uh, over the, the coming months, uh, years even potentially. And, uh, and this would set up uh, an ideal scenario whereby we complete then this first wave to the downside and so we can uh, let's just highlight what it is we're looking at so we have this being our first leg one two this is the third wave that we're in at the moment and so we're, I, potentially we're going to complete here and then we look for the fourth over here and then what we're looking for is uh, is the fifth wave down into this low here so that's, that's the kind of pattern that I'm looking at at the moment. Now, a um, couple of ways of measuring, you know, if, if the price plays out and holds this area in terms of identifying an ideal target for where we, uh, where we can see this fifth wave complete, well, a couple of ways of measuring it. One is an equality objective uh, versus uh, wave one. So if we clone that, you can see that that would put us nicely down into the uh, projected descending trend line here. Um, so that would be an equality objective. Um, and the other way of looking at it is uh, using the FIB retracement tool and looking at the extensions. Uh, ideally, you'd look for, a, you'd look for the, uh, the wave five to complete in the 127 to 161 extension. So again, you know, we're, we're not a million miles away from the equality objective there, uh, 116.30. So 117. So that's the type of um, pattern that I'm tracking at the moment in terms of this uh, equal weighted dollar index. And then obviously that feeds into uh, the broader dollar index. Let's get rid of some of this. Uh, here. So again, we've got, you know, uh, although this, this dollar index is, um, is broader in terms of the fact that it's, uh, it's a weighted dollar index and it is against six uh, pairs, including uh, the Swedish krona, but ironically not including the Australian dollar um, or the Canadian dollar, which are relatively uh, liquid pairs. So we're looking at the same pattern. Um, look for a, a look for Continued tests here in the 9250 area. So we have left shoulder, uh, head down here, and then right shoulder developing here. And so what we're looking at, if, uh, if this is, again, if I'm right, and um, you know, I may not be, um, but what we look for is uh, an equality objective. And if we, if we grind this out, um, you can see that the equality objective will actually put us into um, we're just shy of the descending trend line resistance, which remains intact on the broader dollar index, but obviously it's, uh, it's been taken out on the equal weight. Um, and so if we can get, the, again, this pattern plays out, uh, we get up somewhere near to those uh, prior spike lows. And, um, and what I've been looking for there, uh, let's just, let me also, bear with me guys. So we can also just measure this, symmetry swing here and if we track that against our current low there so you can see this is all starting to uh to give some confluence here at this uh 94.50 area so if we do get up into there then similar to the the pattern we just looked at 
in the equal way, we, uh, we'd expect something like this to uh, develop, which would, again, put us nicely down into the, uh, the projected descending trend line resistance for the third test. And again, would, um, would give us this initial five wave um, impulsive decline. And then what we'd anticipate from there is that uh, we then see a corrective move, which in all likelihood uh, is, is gonna be something like this. And that the correct, this initial correction should complete back into uh, where we see the beginning of uh, the fifth wave. Bear with me, guys. Um, and so, if what we'd look for is is that you know a correction into this area, and uh, then we would anticipate if the pattern is going to play out that from here we would then start another leg to the downside. So that just gives you a, a broad perspective in terms of the dollar. And obviously then that feeds into the Euro. Uh, Kano, I follow your plan to buy Euro USD from 117.50 or 122. Yeah, so I mean, Kano, the, that, you know, that's, uh, that set up for now anyway is, uh, is still valid. The um, slight challenge, if we, you know, if you just think about what I was talking about in terms of uh, the optionality in the market at the moment, uh, we may we may be in for um, a potentially a, a a hold at this 117 and a continued rotation really between 117 and um, and 120. But at this stage, we have I, I don't see I, you know the the FOMC last night um, the guy uh, the, the, the the committee you know have kicked the idea of rates. Uh, of any rate increase really, or even thinking about a rate increase, um, that's been kicked down the road for, uh, for at least the next three years. So, I mean, um, there, is a, there wasn't a catalyst last night, there wasn't any new information really from the FOMC, apart from the fact really that, uh, you know, they have a pretty dim view on, uh, on the economic outlook at this stage, and certainly without a stimulus package um, being forthcoming prior to the elections, um, they, uh, there, is, there are concerns with respect to uh, the economic environment, but from a market perspective, um, the markets remain uh, relatively sanguine about, uh, sanguine about that. So, yeah, the the idea would be here that you know if um, if we are if we can hold this one seventeen, uh, similar to this this phase that we we saw over here in terms of scope. Let's uh, let's just bring that there and. So you can see we're in the, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to grind out this, um, this potential uh, fourth wave here. And if we can do that, then, um, then that should set up the move into the 122. From there, I would anticipate uh, we then see a more uh, marked correction, which could have us back down then into the, the 115, the one, uh, the break point here. Um, but for now, uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, we, we have taken out the trend line support, which is noteworthy. We had a third test of that, you know, we had um, bullish reversals from there, but we've since closed below there. We'd certainly, um, if, you know, to encourage the idea of, of getting in on the long side here, we want to get a close back through this 1840, 1850, where we've got the weekly and the monthly pivot containing the upside at the moment. You notice here all these tails, as we've been testing that monthly pivot, we haven't been able to get a close above it. So whilst we, whilst we can't get a close above, above the monthly pivot, then we have to, uh, or to my mind and how, or the way I look at markets, we have to look at uh, a downside objective. And the downside objective would be, obviously uh, for me anyway, the, uh, I, First port of call is looking at the equality objective. So we could be looking at this scenario um, before then wash, you know, washing out some of the, the weaker longs in the market before then setting up that move to, to get up into, to try and test that 
that 122 objective. Um, so those are those are a couple of scenarios. The important the important thing for the euro here, if you're bullish, is getting that close back through uh, the monthly and the weekly pivots here, and we've got the um, the daily uh, volume waste average price and the weekly volume waste average price both at the moment are negative. So um, certainly we want to see that those flip green um, as per my strategies anyway to to encourage uh, the view that we we can take off again. Uh, note that the, the psych indicator here is now flip bearish as well. So there's a bit of weight, I think, at the moment in the euro. And, um, but, the, but what we do have on, on the flip side of that is this optionality, uh, 117, 120. So um, market makers are likely have to, having to do uh, a bit of delta hedging as we head towards that 117 area. And that's what's uh, causing the support at the moment. But you know, we could pop through there wash out the stops below 117 and then get this equality objective done and watch for bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to look to do something on the long side. So let's just go through a bunch of these others now and see uh, where we might have opportunity. So I shared this, uh, was in, the, in this trade, um, the Swissy here, similar, similar setup to, uh, to what I've just been talking about, obviously in the Euro and the, the dollar index. From inverse head and shoulders, we've got a bullish reversal. Let's get rid of that. And um, if we if we can get up through this neckline, then the the objective uh, for the for the pattern is up at this 94 area, which you'll note is uh, are these prior lows before we rolled over. So um, confluence up there. But again, with the with the pull in terms of the euro and the optionality. Swissy trades pretty much inversely, as does the dollar index. You can see that we're, we're mapping similar patterns here. So uh, not too much to get excited about just yet. Um, dollar yen breaking down. This, this, could, uh, this could get interesting now with the dollar yen. We're taking out the, uh, this triangle pattern. So really what we'd like to see now is, is a move down to retest these lows here. And, um, and then what I'd look for would be this last corrective leg to replicate here and get us back into um, ideally the triangle low there. You can see this type of scenario. So we get that pullback to retest the ascending triangle support from below. So back into that 1530, which has been support um, over the last couple of months. We've had three touches. We've broken down through on the fourth. So we get a, a pull, a, a move down now. It extends. We take out the stops uh, pri uh, underneath the uh, prior lows, and then we get a snapback back into test this descending trendline support as resistance and then that could uh, could set up the next leg to the downside here and we could be looking at a retest of these lows uh, in the uh, in the coming months so that's uh, this is one certainly now that's on the radar we've been stuck in a, a pretty uh, tight range here and this triangle pattern was uh, was really uh, guiding the price action but now we've broken down from it this is the uh, this is the play that I'd be looking for in terms of the dollar yen uh, Looney, I was looking at a similar scenario on the um, intraday charts, four hour inverse head and shoulders, but just going nowhere. Um, we can't, uh, can't get any traction to the upside on that. Euro yen, so these yens are starting to, to roll over here. So what we, um, what we want to look at now is some targets for this move. So on the basis we've uh, we've taken out the equality objective. We then next look at the 161 extension. We've got the monthly VWAP coming up through here. We've got the monthly S3, weekly S3. So if we look at um, where the next opportunity is going to be, to my mind, what we'd like to see is uh, to move down into this target zone. So we get something like this. And then, uh, and then we get a pullback into that prior support here, now acting as resistance, and um, and then we get another leg lower. So again, in terms of thinking about the next opportunities that may be setting up in these pairs, the you know these yens now are certainly looking interesting. Once we put in, you know, once we can see a basing pattern, and then the first pullback will uh, will certainly offer opportunity. So Euro CAD still just sitting above that trend line going. Going nowhere fast in the Eurocad at this stage. 
you're just uh, contracting in a very narrow range. So again, where you get these narrow ranges, the, the trade I think anyway, or the, the highest probability trade is wait for the break and the pullback to retest either the uh, descending trend line resistance as support or the ascending trend line support as resistance. Uh, Euro Aussie, absolutely nowhere, no interest in that. Uh, Euro Kiwi looks like uh, it's going to challenge these uh, these lows here. So um, as per my, uh, one of my strategies is using a pin bar as a continuation entry into a trend. So if we get a close today, um, which is within the range of the prior day's candles, so this uh, 175 to, uh, if we can hold 175 on the close and we close at or below current levels, then this will be a, a signal for me um, on the short side. And, um, and what I'd be targeting here would be this equality objective, which would put us basically um, back into range support here. So this, this is certainly what I'm gonna be watching tonight. If we can close um, at or just below current levels, then I'll be looking at a short position on the break of 175, and I'll be targeting a move down to these prior lows, 171.80. So a few hundred pips there, and an extension to the 70, uh, 72 area, which is the equality objective. Um, so this one is certainly on the radar uh, for tonight. Here is Sterling, not much to do there. Sterling Swiss, again, We've taken out this trend line. So for me, the, the best trade or the, the highest probability trade will be the retest of that from below. Uh, we've got a bit of work to do before we get there. Uh, Sterling has seen a, a bit of a reversal here. The Bank of England once again raised the spectre of, um, of negative rates. Um, but nothing, not, not a setup there for me at the moment. So Sterling Yen, this one's interesting. You can see this last decline that we had, we're sitting right on it now. We're on the monthly S3. Um, so I'm going to I'd certainly pay attention to how we trade in the coming sessions here, because if we can hold uh, this 134.60 on a closing basis and we get a bullish reversal, um, then this could be an interesting opportunity on the long side, because we have uh, this type of pattern in play then. Clone that. And we would be looking at something like that. So uh, that's one to keep an eye on into, uh, into the close tonight. Make, you want to see this quality objective hold. If it does, then we uh, watch how we trade tomorrow. There might be an opportunity on the long side there. Sterling CAD, nothing for me to do there. Or there. You can see these big reversals we've seen in these sterling pairs on that uh, on that news out of the um, BOE. Now this sterling Aussie actually is interesting because it's going to potentially give uh, what I refer to as a momentum entry. So you can see here we have the monthly VWAP bearish, weekly VWAP bearish. We attempted a bullish reversal yesterday. And now we're getting another reversal. So if we close um, down towards this 175 handle here in the Sterling Aussie, we, ideally I'd like to see the, this RSI stochastic uh, roll over. But certainly we've got negative, uh, negative momentum as per the psych indicator. And you'll know what we've done here. If we think about this idea of retesting support as resistance, you can see we ping just back into this big double bottom where we did get where we did get the initial recovery and that was underpinned with this uh, bullish divergence here but now we've taken out those lows and we're making new lows in terms of the psych indicator for this leg and we're getting this outside reversal candle so this again um, similar to that euro kiwi that i just talked about this would give me a, uh, a potential um, momentum entry targeting. So, I mean, even if we think in terms of the near term uh, wave structure of this move, we, uh, we'd be looking at an equality objective. So if we, again, just eyeballing it, not getting into the fibs or any of that stuff or losing your mind about any wave, but just looking at the simple structure, you can see how we can easily make the argument for that being a five wave pattern. 
and uh, a quality objective will take us back down through the lows here. So currently trade 176, we could be down at 174. If we bring in uh, the big tool here. And yeah, we get that uh, once, uh, 127 extension. Once, so 72 to 7, 172, 173 would be the FIB target to the downside, the equality objective at 174. So, you know, we've got great targets to the downside. We've got a very bearish structure. And, um, and this one has uh, certainly has potential um, to my mind on the downside if we can get, um, if we can get the, the close to basically, at current levels or below is, uh, is what I'd suggest with that, that Sterling Aussie. So let's check in with the Aussie. Continues to uh, grind away here, holding on for dear life at this trend line. Um, I've been in and out of this on the long side. I still uh, sense the potential for a test of this 75 level before this move is done. And, uh, and you know, we get a, more, we get a decent correction develop. Um, back into this 70 handle. So again, and, and the, the reason for this, or the, you know, part of the, the driver behind that sentiment is we've got a, a lot of divergence here that ultimately will be addressed in the form of, of driving um, of driving a correction. So um, so we keep an eye. I, again, if we close out or above current levels, then I might go back in here on the long side tonight. Because uh, if we think about the inverse to the bearish momentum uh, plays that I just talked about, we've got, uh, got things lining up here on the bullish side again. So we'll see. I could be back in. i take another shot at that uh, tonight. Looking for this 75 test. Uh, Aussie yen. Nothing there at the moment. Nothing there, actually. <clears throat> so again, thinking in terms of momentum, um, we're bullish, we're bullish, we're bullish. We've got the RSI stochastic coming up from above, uh, below the 20 level, and we're bullish in terms of the psych indicator. So, you know, this, uh, this I mean, I'd play it through the major, obviously, at this stage, but you can see the Aussie has, uh, has got a bunch of bullish momentum setups here developing. Uh, Aussie Kiwi, not so much because Kiwi's, uh, Kiwi's trading stronger at the moment. Um, let's have a look at the Kiwi. So, Kiwi's holding. Continue to hold uh, this trend line in a bullish reversal here. So I might take a look at this tonight on the long side because we've got uh, we've got a move or potential for a move. I would anticipate at least up to this 69 handle um, and see how we trade there. We've been hogging this trend line, getting a bullish outside reversal potential today. So again, at or above current levels um, would be sufficient for me anyway to take a look at this on the long side uh, this evening. So we'll see how that. That's uh, QEM doing nothing. QE Swiss, again, just confirming we're coming up into that trend line here. Fourth test, and for those who, who work with me on a daily basis, you know I, I think the fourth tests are the ones that tend to give way. So we could be in for a, a breakout here to the upside in terms of the Kiwi Swiss. Um, and if I want, you know, if I was going to play the Aussie. Um, Swiss or the Kiwi Swiss at this stage, looking at the Aussie Kiwi, um, certainly the, it looks like we've got a bit more strength in the Kiwi at the moment. And so that's the one I'd, I'd be looking at. Um, if we can just sit just below this trend line tonight, then again, that could be interesting from a momentum perspective. We've got all the VWAPs bullish, RSI stochastic coming back up from, uh, from below, uh, what, sorry, not from below 20, but um, flipping bullish with the green fast line over the slow line. And we're sitting right at that trend line where we'd anticipate a bunch of stops will be uh, sitting in the market. So if we can get through there, 61.50, we've got an equality objective back into these prior highs at the 63 handle. And we've got side bullish there. So there's a bunch of, you know, a couple of uh, setups here that, uh, that could be interesting tonight. Let's see where we are. Kiwi Cad bullish. CAD Swiss going nowhere. CAD Yen is sitting on this trend line, fourth test. So again, um, this looks bearish for a breakdown. And then what I'd be looking at would be the, the snapback. So we get through here, probably into these lows here. And then we get that snapback here. And that will be a potential opportunity on the short side then for, um, for an extension lower. 
and certainly we could be looking down into this uh, monthly S3. So that's one to have on the radar. Swiss yen, uh, nothing there. Let's take a look at these futures. So we're taking out the trend line. Let's see. I mean, intraday, these aren't worth paying attention to. You really just want to focus on where this, where, where they, where they close. We're holding that symmetry swing support at the moment. So can't get too bearish until we take out 3,300 on a closing basis. Um, and this is just rotation. And I still see the potential for us to test this 3726 before we get a more meaningful correction. Last one I want to take a look at is the yellow metal gold. So triangle pattern here in gold. Um, one second, let me just fill that in. So we've been trading this in this triangle, you, you know, uh, the, the idea of alternation in terms of Elliott Wave and a swift pullback here, now something more protracted. Um, but certainly look for a breach of the monthly pivot here. So 1970 on a closing basis, um, to my mind, will certainly set up a, a retest of these prior highs at, uh, at 2073. Um, let's just see where we are in terms of quality objectives. Yeah, so just shy there if we, if we see an equality move. But like I say, I have to take out the, um, the monthly pivot on a closing basis. And you can see we tested through the descending trend line yesterday, but got pulled back right back into the apex of the triangle, not uncommon. So you'd really want to wait for a close through that 1975 to uh, set up a move back up to 2055 is the, uh, is the equality objective there. Okay, so that's, um, that's basically what I'm looking at in terms of near-term opportunities. The ones I like are the, um, the Euro Kiwi, Sterling Aussie, uh, the Kiwi, Kiwi Swiss. Um, so those four, I'd certainly be watching this evening, see where we close as they may offer some near-term opportunities. Okay, um, are there any questions? If you have a question, you can um, type it into the chat box or, um, I can unmute your mic if you have one. If you don't have a question, if you just type an N in the chat box, um, that's equally helpful so that I know you uh, followed along. <coughs> okay, good stuff. Well, look, I'm gonna wrap, uh, wrap this session up here. Like I say, watch that Euro Kiwi, Sterling Aussie, uh, the Aussie Kiwi and the Kiwi Swiss this evening. Uh, look to be interesting opportunities. Thanks very much for your time and, uh, and I hope this helps.